Okay, mode six. How many guys are using mode six? Okay, mode six would be quite helpful, and before we get going, I want you to think about mode six as the predecessor for pending DCCs. It's engineering stuff. It's nine modes of OBD2. So let's take a little trip through. Here's the nine different modes of OBD2. Data stream, freeze frame, you're all familiar with these, right? These are things you see when you plug your scan tool in. Diagnostic trouble flows, the codes, clearing and resetting DTCs. Oxygen sensor test, you don't know what it gets you aggravated. You go to the oxygen sensor test on your scan tool. And what do most of you see? There's nothing in a lot of cases. But there is some on some cars, starting in 2008 model year cars, there will be information in there. So you should always look and check it, and sometimes this could be a function of the vehicle's PCM, or it could be your scan tool not making the right query. Mode six is onboard monitoring test results for non-continuous monitors. Non-continuous monitors are all the monitors on the car, except misfire, fuel, and comprehensive component. Now, there's a little bit of a lie right there because misfire data in mode six you get, right? And we said that is a continuous monitor. This is what SAE, Society of Automotive Engineers, actually states. This is what they're supposed to follow. Do they always follow the things the right way? Just like the diagnostic link connection behind the ashtray and the towel on the floor, you know what I'm talking about. It's getting better, but it's there. Mode seven, onboard monitoring test results for continuous monitors. That's where misfire data should be. Number eight, control onboard test or component. This, by the way, on all CAN vehicles, you will be able to have bi-directional control of the EVAP solenoid, the vent solenoid, on generic OBD2. It's a federal law. So any scan tool, I don't care if it's an auto x-ray, if it's a high-end tool, you can be able to do that for EVAP testing. That's in 2008. Some cars already have it. The OTC scan tool he has over here has that option in it. Bernie scan tool, Ease, all have the option built in already. Mode 9, you guys do inspections, you gotta be careful of this mode. Mode 9 is the diagnostic fingerprint of the vehicle. It knows what calibration is in there, what the VIN number is in most cases. This is how they build sting operations to come in and find guys in different states. Here you have a hybrid system, meaning you have centralized inspection and decentralized. Over in New York, we just have decentralized. So guys unplug from one car, they go, hmm, this other one looks just like it, they'll never know the difference. Plug in there and give my buddy a sticker. They're gonna know the difference. So be careful with the mode nine that gives any information. Some of the different scan tools. These are all different ones that support mode six data with one exception. The tech two does not give you mode six. Guys call me up all the time. Hey, my tech two must be broken. I can't get mode six. You can't get it because it doesn't give it. GM does mode six totally different. They decode it for you. So they don't give you mode six data per se given you in a different way. Before you select mode six, all monitors should be ready. Nine out of 10 times. If the monitors are not ready, the test results you're gonna get are probably not accurate. Okay? Any questions on that so far? I'm gonna give you some case studies and some pitfalls that you're gonna go through. Some screens, the MODIS does only hexadecimal data, meaning you need to go to www.nastf.org and go to all the manufacturer websites and take the information and take the hexadecimal TID, SID, and TID, test ID, SID, component ID, MID, monitor ID, and you need to break that down into, is it an oxygen sensor? Is it, you know, a high or low test or whatever they're looking for? Some of the stuff like uh, Alex Pepper software, He's an engineer from SAE. He has a, a software scan tool, Ease. Um, the guy, uh, Horik, out of uh, Auto uh, Diagnose. He's out of, um, not what the, Auto Logic. He's out of Texas. 
he does a pretty good job, and you'll see that on IAPN, with breaking down mode six data, although some of it is not correct. Mass detect, that gives you only hexadecimal data. A good little scan tool, inexpensive, auto x-ray, does a pretty nice job. Uh, guys that do it really well is Bernie, who, by the way, I don't have the Bernie tool up there, but it's his shots anyway. Bernie is very fanatical about making sure that the mode six data is correct. A lot of the scan tool companies are not transferring information correctly. And that could also screw you up. The Genesis does a pretty good job overall, and their latest software that's out, the 2006 software, now gives you a one button test that'll give you all the information out of all the controllers on the vehicle. Pretty neat stuff. Now here are test limits. Minimum, maximum, both min and max, or test limit. Notice here we have ECU ID 10. 10 on most cars means engine controller. Does it all the time mean that, but I would say nine out of 10 of the cars you work on, engine controller ID 10 is the engine controller. It's gonna tell you a test results, whether it passed or failed. If you see a pass, don't even bother looking. Don't bother, because it may not mean anything to you. It's a pass. Why should you start looking at something that's not a problem to solve? If it's a fail, you start looking at these things here. What is the test value? That means what are the tested out? What's the test limit? Notice the value and the limit the same. And what type is it? Is it min and max, or is it maximum? This is a maximum limit of 29. It's seen a test value of 29 and said, fast, we're ready to go. Now some people like picking the pepper out of the flight and going, 29 is the same number, this thing is gonna fail. Don't miss your time. It may not fail. People overanalyze stuff. Do not take big guns out if you don't need big guns. What I mean by that is don't overanalyze stuff. Go in to see if there's any mode six failures, then go into dependent codes, then go into regular DTCs, and then go into the manufacturer specific, okay? Because you may have a code lurking somewhere. This is an alert system to, to make your customer aware is there a problem going on and not and make you aware of it. Is there, there's a problem or not. Does that make sense? Okay. Now this one here actually helped me fix a car up in Alaska and it was a Ford EVAC setup. We're in ECU number 10. It failed, so I looked at it, and this is perfect. A minimum limit of 61,850. Let's blow that up so you can just see that back there real good. So you all can see that. 61,850, a maximum of 61,952. It measured, it tested, what's the test, gentlemen? Is it under 61? Could you see why it fell? Now you may go, what does that number mean? I personally don't give it what the number means. I know it failed, it told me it's a fuel tank pressure test. I found a broken line, fix the problem. Okay. Now meanwhile, pending code didn't have anything. The customer complained was the mill would come on once in a while and he couldn't figure out. So mode six is helpful in this case found that in many cases that mode six is helpful. The state of California made our mode six material mandatory. Every guy that's certified in the state of California has to go through a mode six EVAP and uh, CAN system that we did for them. They have to go through a training or they can lose their license. Unlike here, where it may not be mandatory or at least in your state it's not mandatory. Mandatory out there. We were the first book selected. We actually built it specially for them. Guys get the understanding when they start using this. Some scan tools, as I said before, are more user friendly. So you can see a couple of things going through here where you can see what I may favor, like I favor this tool, I favor Bernie's tool. It makes my life easier. Here's a case study, 2004 F-150, a 4x4, 4 4 4 5.4-liter coil on plug. This is actually up in Alaska in the Department of Transportation. This vehicle, Make sure the vehicle is OED2 certified. Here's a guy that read stuff on IATN. IATN can get you in trouble. It's a phenomenal resource, but you got to know what you're looking at. This guy went in there, he read stuff, and you all think a 150 
is a pretty light duty truck, right? What do you need to know before you go into mode six? You're gonna to need to know the following. What does it say for certification? I mean, can you read that? It's OBD1 certified. How many of you guys have had brain thoughts when you're going through an inspection and you're saying, hold it, this vehicle is, is not going through your, your machine or whatever. It has an OBD2 plug, but it's not OBD2 certified. So you know what mode 16 it is? Forget about it. It ain't gonna help you, why? Because it doesn't comply with the federal rule. They can do anything. So watch what this guy does in the problem he goes through. Everyone with me, this is right on his car. In case you can't see it, I blew up that part right there. Good question. Over 8,501 pounds, sir. That's what people don't look at. You got an RTFB, or in this case, read the label, read the freaking label, and see what it says. And how many of you guys check under hood labels? Some of you don't. Okay, let's look at the scan there. A little hard for you to see, but on this side right over here, we have this on a Genesis. He has most misfires, 200 revolution, type A, maximum limit 15,616, measured 16,506. ECU 10 and it failed. So right away this guy who found, he starts changing everything. Well, not the right thing to do on this car. Might move over. He goes in and here's the only one out of every cylinder. This has eight cylinders, right? And by the way, don't be surprised if you're on a four cylinder Ford and you get six failures. You know why? Because they always go in their software, they think it's a 10 cylinder. They make a 10 cylinder motor, don't they? So you could get screwed with stuff like that. Be careful on what you're looking at. So here it tells on cylinder number five, in maximum value 15,003 something, it's pretty hard to see that, it's a little blurry. It measured 81. That's the only thing it came up with. Now, Matt Vanderbrink's coil unplug, I did use it on this car, the guy had a misfire had nothing to do with mode six getting you anywhere near the problem. It was on the other bank where the guy had a problem. So mode six was not correct because again, they didn't have to make it correct. Does that make sense? So this guy threw parts in the car, pissed him on all over the place, wasted his time because he didn't understand what he's doing. That's where gentlemen, a good foundation is very, very important. You know, you can buy all these tools and guys jump to different areas because they think it's cool or whatever, or they read it somewhere. Bottom line is you better get a good foundation no matter what you do or what you use. Know the tool like the back of your hand, know where to get the right information, and make sure the vehicle is OBD certified. And even there, there can be some problems. So measure 81, nowhere near the limit of 15, 3, 60. Big difference. Here's a Hyundai. This Hyundai came in, and it's standard, standard type of vehicle. We hooked it up to the nice old Lotus. Not all monitors were complete. The shop that got this thing, looked at it, thought there was a problem somewhere else in the system. Went through mode six, goes test ID 07. It has a engine controller. Remember we said they're 10? This one is 12. Has a minimum value of 27. A maximum not available, meaning it's only a minimum test. It says it failed. Okay. This is what the results it has. It says it failed. So you'll see. There's just the highlights on it. It failed. So now you've got a concern, correct? Do you really have a concern? This is the information off the Hyundai website. Let's try to blow it up just a little bit. So that's, that's the whole mode six on Hyundai's. Now, two things happened here. I've had a couple of guys do this. We flip back to that slide. It tells you test ID 07. Guy goes down the list and looks at this comes across because you got a catalyst efficiency problem. That's not seven, that's list of seven. 
a guy actually did this. Test ID 7, what does it say here? Supported reserve, it has nothing. It's a system that doesn't even exist. So you're, you're chasing a ghost on it. Here's some pitfalls and how you can get screwed. Does that make sense? Any questions on it? So when you look at this stuff, you gotta be careful. A lot of guys are gonna tell you it's the best thing since swipe red, you gotta do mode six, it's real cool, you know. Cool don't mean squat, dudes. You gotta fix cars, you gotta make money, you gotta diagnose it right. You gotta know what you're looking at. Okay? So be careful. And the other key thing, if we go back a couple of slides, monitors, not all monitors are completed. I'm not really trusting anything on here. Now, it's not to say that there haven't been cars that I had a catalyst problem on where the cat, before the monitor was complete, the cat kept failing. But the other monitors on the car were complete. The catalytic converter on the car was bad. So you got to know what car companies do what and how to test it. You know, for Chrysler, by the way, right, you have a lot of different engine controllers. Each engine controller is totally different. You're going to see when Dr. Norman Noble comes out, he's going to be doing a whole big thing on this, okay? All in depth, different stuff than I have here. But good information that's going to help you diagnose and fix cars using it the right way. Here's my accountant's car, a P0420. You know what that is? Sure you Bad catalyst. Well, the Infinity dealer did not want to give him squat. The light went on, he told him, ah, don't worry about it, they cleared the code out. So one day he's coming to pick up some tax papers, and he mentions this, I go, hey Al, that's not right, you can't clear the code out. And I look, he has about 70 something thousand miles on it, eight year or 80,000 years, the cat's five miles, okay? So I said, let me look into it. I hooked this up, this is on an older version, this goes a little while back, OTC did not take the information decoded. It does tell me maximum was 38, a minimum 38, it measured 19. That means it only had one to do, right? Had a failure. I said, okay, since they turned your light off and your monitors are complete, I went into mode 6, because there was no code yet. I go in there, I look it up on a manufacturer website, and I have to blow this up, it's tough to see. By the way, these guys took my money, and you know I head the training committee for NASDF, so I have access to a lot of these websites for free, but I didn't want it for free. I paid, I took my credit card out, I went in, I paid them, it took them two days to give me access. They took my money like this, two days. When I went to the Detroit meeting, we meet twice a year, we have calls like today, we have calls four times a year, I put a complaint in against them. They said, oh, you should have let us know it was you. <laughs> so, oh, does it make a difference? Yeah, point of this is not about me, it's about automotive community, the technicians. Everyone should be able to pay for that. If this was a customer with a car in their bay, we're going to tell this guy, two days, you got to wait. They're not going to be happy with that. So let's blow this up. Take a look. This is their whole list, by the way. I also wrote them up for not having this information easily accessible. This information was like, was very tough to find. It was not, bless your truth, it was not readily available. So notice here, they put something different. They got 02H. Remember where we had O2? We go back one slide. Remember test ID O2? We go there, there's a 420. It tells me it's a catalyst problem. Now, I heard one of the guys say reprogramming. Yes, that works on some of them, not on all of them. There's a couple of fixes. Reprogram one of them. The other one is putting a different oxygen sensor in and a tube, and the third one is changing the catalytic converter, which this one needs. Because of the length of these quick seminar tonight, I didn't put in all the pictures, all the rest of the stuff, and give it to you quick, because we got to get out of here at a certain time. That makes sense? So this one, it helped them, and by the way, the dealer tried to stroke them. He went a little over 80,000, and he brought it down again. He said, you're over 80,000. Yeah. help So I told him, here's what you do, dude. Drop the dial, you're pulling the bottom of the motor vehicle, and you're pulling Holly Caglisi from EPA. All of a sudden, the owner of Pepe Motors decided that this guy was getting free catalytic converter and a free oxygen sensor. They did the whole shooting match. Big difference. Sometimes you got to pull it. Here's a Toyota Camry, and this is Bernie's tool. Bernie's tool is a tool, easy scan tool. Remember for TST members, 
Rather than paying $7.95, we do have it for six and a quarter. It's updated on version eight. Uh, Mr. Ronello will tell you this thing is killer. I use it quite a bit. It tells you if you have monitors complete or not complete. These are complete, it's in green. It tells me it has a DTC. One of them, it's a red, charging voltage. It tells you engine vacuum, temperature warm up, fuel trim, all that nice stuff. We're looking at here, it tells me I got no pending codes, and I got a P0420. Okay. This Toyota has a 420. We look at it, we identify the problem, we run mode six. The mode six comes up, we better do blow up again. This is a little tough to see. What does that say, gentlemen? It says catalyst active air fuel method, bank one storage capacity comes up with a failure. Okay. The big thing you gotta be careful of, and Bernie has a lot of Toyota stuff. How many guys have used Bernie's tool? You ever notice that the Toyota has specific engines and stuff, and if it doesn't line up with the right one, you're not gonna get the right information out of it. Okay. So you gotta be very careful what you pick, and whether it's a P, a Z, a EV, or whatever the code is, it's gonna tell you if it's good or bad. John. So make a point that Bernie highlights in red when it's out of the threshold. It highlights in yellow when it's getting ready to go out of the threshold. So yellow is the thermostat problem ready to go. Is problem in red. Okay. He uses yellow, red, or green. Now, it doesn't mean on everything you see you jump on it. You got to test it multiple times. Bernie also has a thing here where you can test read once or read continuous. You read it continuous and constantly updates which is really nice when you're looking at a problem. Okay. So this car, we go through, we wind up seeing it. It does come up with, I had to put that slide in, it comes in with a catalyst problem, not only that O2 problem, that was bad. We now take a look in generic. Notice generic doesn't tell us anything. This is what a lot of scan tools do. It just gives you hexadecimal. Now I got to play this, right? But all I need to do on Bernie's tool is go to drop down menu, pick the right engine and year for the car. And again, that list is expanded and expanded. He keeps doing more and more cars, right, John? I mean, yeah, he just got done doing Saab and Jaguar. Saab and Jaguar, he's on that. And it comes no, he just got done. He's working on Mercedes and BMW next. So now you can even see, here's a different picture on that car with a mill. It has a pending DTC, it turns yellow. It's a pretty neat tool. You go here, you look, make sure it's important. All the monitors are complete. Real nice to tell you. Also tells you how many oxygen sensors are on board that are active. If it's not lit up in green, it's not there. It tells you also if we have fuel trim problems going on. Okay. So this car did have a catalytic converter problem. We did some run right stuff, one of our sponsors, by the way. Run right, in case you've forgotten, is all Tecron stuff. You guys that came up to Chevron Texaco that time. They package all of the Chevron and Texaco product, and their stuff really does work without ruining anything. You gotta be careful of any any stuff that's in metal cans that may have alcohol or other chemicals that could make a problem on a composite intake manifold or plastic coated manifolds or other problems that you may encounter. So here, you run it through, you look at it, the catalyst, here's the, the catalyst stuff there. Now we're at a zero, okay? And remember, the catalytic converter is good, okay? The catalytic converter is good, it's a zero. Zero is the best test results you can get, right? If it's a one, that means you fail. So if we had something measured up here, rather than the test value of zero, zero, test limit 999, if we had something that said 0 0.898, which is gonna tell you about the catalytic converter. It's, it's up there. now. Don't fail it. What you need to do is you need to do sometimes a fuel system cleaning. Okay. And whether you use BG, WIMS, Run Right, clean the system up, you'll be surprised how the catalytic converter comes back to life. The catalytic converter has three precious metals, platinum, palladium, and rhodium. And after the car's been running bad for 20, 30, 40, 50 plus thousand miles, you may have to do a couple of these cleanings. Does that make sense? Sometimes a catalytic converter will come back to life. Okay, in most cases it will, but sometimes. In fact, I think last month, your newsletter from last month, Jim did an article and it was up front, and I believe the cleaning helped on out. Okay. 
So you got to try the easy stuff first because what a catalytic converter is 500, 1,000, or 3,000 for a Mercedes Benz. You wouldn't want your car to just get the three thousand dollars converter, correct? Right? Any questions on that? We'll give you a crash course on mode sets, and that's basically what I have for you tonight. Thank you.